Well, it is considered one of the Bay's best natural defenses. And today, this levee breach marked a major step forward in an ambitious effort to restore thousands of acres of tidal wetlands on the West Coast. Max Darrow was there at the site of a former industrial salt pond in Menlo Park. He explains why this is so important for a healthier bay. As a result of this levee breach happening behind me, the San Francisco Bay just grew by about 300 acres. The move will protect wildlife and create a natural barrier against sea level rise. This was the moment when the San Francisco Bay reclaimed an old 300-acre industrial salt pond in Menlo Park. Years in the making that David Lewis was grateful to see. It creates hope. Lewis is the executive director of Save the Bay, an organization that works to protect and restore the San Francisco Bay. This effort was the latest example of progress made by the South Bay Salt Pond Restoration Project to restore historic wetlands to tidal marshes. And in just a few years, this dry, crusty salt pond will be a, a lush green tidal marsh that supports uh, amazing fish and wildlife, especially bird life. Tidal marshes around the bay have disappeared as the Bay Area grew bigger and bigger, says Amy Hutzel, the executive officer of the State Coastal Conservancy. Since the gold rush, we've lost close to 90 percent of our tidal wetlands in San Francisco Bay. It has been decades in the making to restore this spot and other spots all around San Francisco Bay and to have a much healthier bay. Better for wildlife and for the people who live around the bay, says Lewis. Tidal marsh is one of the best natural protections, green solutions to sea level rise and flooding. The reason? Tidal marsh acts like a sponge and it can actually hold that water during high tide and flood events and then release it slowly so that it doesn't pose as big a risk to the adjacent communities. Around this particular spot, East Palo Alto and parts of Menlo Park are at or below sea level right now. So with sea level rise, they're going to be at greater risk. Uh, there's going to be a lot of adaptation that's needed, uh, probably pumps for extreme flood events. But the more we can restore tidal marsh around the edges of these communities, the more natural protection can be a part of that solution. While that future isn't tomorrow, Lewis says it's not far off we're going to see a significant sea level rise just in the next few decades. We have time to prepare our communities to be more resilient. This won't be the last time you see the Bay reclaiming what was once a part of it in a controlled manner. Lewis, Hutzel, the South Bay Salt Pond Restoration Project and the Fish and Wildlife Service have a goal of restoring 15,000 acres of historic wetlands in the hopes of creating a better future for the Bay. And back in 2003, the South Bay salt ponds were acquired from food corporation Cargill, Inc. The deal was brokered by the late Senator Dianne Feinstein, a longtime champion of the restoration effort.